Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. We are approaching Eid, and it's a very different Eid than we usually know about. This Eid might be unprecedented in our lifetime. With me is Dr. Shabir Ali from the Islamic Information Center, now in his living room. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's my pleasure to be on the show, Sophia. Dr. Shabir, let's talk about what Eid will be like this year, because it will be different, and many people might not actually know uh, how to adjust to this Eid. So we need to give them some advice uh, today, and uh, I thought, who better to turn to than you? Um, so tell us how, what your advice would be about how we can celebrate Eid in these strange and difficult and challenging times. Yeah, I'm not sure, Sophia, um, that uh, I can accept that glowing compliment that I'm the best person for this, but nonetheless, <laughs> I'm here. So let me uh, try to shed some thoughts on that. Uh, in fact, uh, I have to say that not only in Canada are we, uh, are we going to be experiencing it differently, but uh, across the globe, in many countries, in Saudi Arabia in particular, according to the Saudi Gazette, a 24-hour curfew has been announced uh, for the dates uh, May 23rd to May 27th. And those coincide with what uh, those coincide with what would normally be the days of Eid celebration, from the 30th mm -hmm. of Ramadan uh, to the next uh, four days uh, following. That means the days of the day of Eid and, and three days after that. And that is obviously uh, with the with the view of preventing uh, gatherings and, and socialization. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Eid would be very somber everywhere then. And that's right, yes. And of course, um, it, it's not only the Eid prayer that gets affected by uh, this situation. It is also the usual socialization in that, uh, that normally, uh, I mean, we have non-Muslim uh, viewers, so we have to explain, if you don't mind, uh, what, what normally happens on an Eid day to, to, in order to, ex uh, to understand what's going to be different this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, shall I explain that? Yes, please do that, Dr. Shabir. So, so normally, Safiya, as, as Muslims uh, are very well aware, uh, on uh, the day of Eid, we have certain traditions that we normally uh, observe, and they are connected with the fact that we're going to go have a prayer and we're going to meet uh, people uh, before and after the prayer. So uh, one important tradition is what is referred to as the Eid charity, or Sadaqatul Fitr. Uh, this is a charity that uh, every Muslim who has... Uh, excess uh, in excess of one's uh, needs for the day uh, are expected every muslim is thus expected to give a, a uh, what what amounts to basically a meal for a poor person for the day in traditional uh, t uh, language it's given as uh, a certain amount of grain which may mm -hmm. translate to about two and a half kilos of flour and you can work out the cost of that probably about six dollars in canadian funds um, but but one may give a little bit more than that because uh, if one gives six dollars like for an affluent person in Canada it may not feel like you're giving charity it may feel like you're just giving away some small change mm -hmm. so, uh, so many imams recommend uh, ten dollars uh, as uh, as a cash item uh, but uh, to go and now find the people who are deserving of this and so on the lockdown is affecting all of this uh, but there are many good uh, charitable groups out there or organizations who are willing to collect the funds on, and, and to donate it on your behalf uh, to deserving recipients. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so that's I guess one we have aspect. to go out and search for those organizations now online, right? Uh, yes, of course. And there are many such. They're not difficult uh, to find. And uh, may I say humbly that the Islamic Information Center, if one were to go to islaminfo.com, one could actually uh, donate there as well for this specific purpose. One will find the specific link for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, in addition to that, um, uh, on, on the day of Eid itself, it is uh, recommended for uh, Muslims to have a shower, uh, to put on one's uh, best clothes for the day, and um, uh, to go out early in, in the morning to the Eid gathering. Uh, and one would go out uttering uh, the glorification of God, saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and so on. Um, uh, then one would go and into the gathering and continue with this uh, celebratory praise of God uh, until the eight, eight prayer is actually uh, done. The, the, the leader of the prayer comes out, he starts uh, with the prayer, uh, then he gives uh, a sermon. And after the sermon, people will very... Uh, 
uh, merrily greet each other, hug each other, and tell each other Eid Mubarak, uh, you know, may this be a blessed day of Eid for you, and so on. And uh, then following that, they could be in many of the mosques, usually uh, some snacks and sweets uh, and maybe even food. Uh, some of the uh, mosques uh, may be large enough to incorporate a children's play area, and maybe something like a bouncy castle could be brought in, as we have done at our premises in past years. Uh, and uh, some aid gatherings are held in large convention centers and sometimes uh, where the weather permits, even in open parks. And uh, these uh, occasions are often accompanied by uh, a lot of activities for children. Sometimes, uh, you know, a whole amusement uh, center is set up. Um, an amusement park uh, is set up for Muslim kids on this day. There's a lot of food, food vendors, are everywhere. Uh, there are activities and fun for people of all ages. Uh, so now that you see this general picture, Sophia, you can uh, well <laughs> imagine uh, how different uh, our Eid is going to be uh, this year. So, you know, the Eid prayer that you mentioned is sort of the linchpin, right, of, of the whole Eid day. It's, it's, it's the highlight of that day. Um, so how do Muslims manage the Eid without that that part of the day because you know they, they structure their celebration around that prayer and then it's suddenly taken away from them what do they do yeah. Yes, yes uh, many of the Muslim scholars have started to address this question um, as, as in, in my own view uh, we, we could have a virtual prayer in which uh, case we gather uh, in the morning, um, as we might have gathered in the mosque, but we're gathering uh, over the internet, either using something like Zoom or uh, some other way of connecting and holding a, a, an online meeting. Uh, so we can start with the usual. We have the glorification of God. Uh, we can have some uh, children performing uh, some songs. Uh, they might recite something from the Quran from out of memory. Um, uh, something of this nature to uh, give some joy and merriment to the community and then uh, the imam will start his prayer and uh, following the prayer there will be a, a sermon all of this done virtually now mm -hmm. Um, uh, most other scholars uh, do not agree that a virtual prayer can be done, uh, but uh, no one will object if we have a gathering in which we, uh, a, a virtual gathering in which we have the takbirat or the glorification of God, uh, and then we take a break for people to pray individually, which is what many of the scholars are recommending. Uh, individually meaning separately in their separate homes. So if you are together in a home, uh, then one can lead the prayer and one's family could, could follow. So what, a family would pray together. Mm -hmm. And then they can uh, rejoin uh, the community online virtual meeting uh, in order to have a virtual sermon delivered. So, so this one, this position is uh, a balanced one in that uh, it uh, is not open to controversy. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a controversial position. So um, it's not that anyone is going to object to what you have done and then spoil your whole mood uh, for the rest of the Eid day. Mm -hmm. So many of the scholars are saying then that Muslims should pray the Eid prayer in the morning within their own home with their family then. That's right. And okay. in addition to that, they are allowing for uh, Muslim communities to get together online uh, to do the glorification of God uh, and also to have a virtual sermon, especially mm -hmm. to have the virtual uh, sermon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is, of course, not mandatory, right? Uh, of course, the Eid prayer even within the mosque is not mandatory. So within the home is, is, is probably less mandatory than that. Yes, and of course the whole situation is unprecedented. Uh, we, if, the, if the prayer was held in the mosque, uh, then it, it, one can th th think of it as having said, uh, are, are placing a great degree of uh, emphasis on, on the Muslims to go and join it because, mm -hmm. you know, this is the Eid prayer. Like, wh why are we going to miss the Eid prayer? It only happens twice a year, uh, and, and this is one of those times. And this is a special time because it marks the end of the month of Ramadan, a whole month of uh, worship 
worship and, and sacrifice, well, in terms of um, giving up all of the things that we normally might have done and enjoyed because we're concentrating on uh, worship and fasting, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, praying long prayers at night. So this is a special day for Muslims. Why would you want to miss the Eid prayer? So that's if it's being done in the mosque. So some of the uh, schools of Islamic jurisprudence would uh, say that this is wajib, uh, which means that it is obligatory, but they hesitate to say that it is fard because you need a greater uh, level of proof to say that this is fard or uh, also obligatory. Uh, so two words here we have, which can both be translated as obligatory, fard uh, and, and wajib. But fard, uh, as a technical legal term in Islamic jurisprudence, requires a greater degree of proof. When, mm -hmm. uh, for some scholars, if you don't have that great degree of proof, uh, but it still seems like something essential for Muslims to do or highly important, they will say that it is wajib, which mm -hmm. we might translate now for distinction by saying essential. Mm-hmm. Others say that it is just sunnah, and you're right. In that case, it means that it is not an obligation for Muslims, even if it was being offered in the mosque. But we mm -hmm. can see now that if it is not being offered in the mosque and is just left for Muslims uh, to govern their own affairs, and we know how we are as human beings, there is a sort of group dynamic uh, that, that gives us energy. When we're together as a group, we want to do more as a group. But if we're left to our own uh, in our homes and so on, we might tend to be a little bit more lax and, and so we cannot insist that uh, the level of obligation will be the same uh, under this lockdown. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, is there any precedent, Dr. Shabir, for for people to pray within their home? They eat prayer. Uh, the only thing we could find is uh, what is reported uh, in the case of Annas as an example, one of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that once he missed the Eid prayer and then he prayed together with his family at home. Uh, but uh, that is not an, an, an exact precedent for our situation because that is a situation in which the prayer was being held in the mosque uh, or in the Eid gathering, um, mm -hmm. which wasn't at the time in the mosque. It was in a special uh, open area. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the prayer was being held by the community and then somebody happened to miss it so he tries to make it up at home that that's what that circumstance tells us uh, but it doesn't tell us what you should do if there is no prayer being held by the congregation at all um, but we can say that uh, a given that muslims on this day will want to be part of this, they would want to have the Eid prayer. I mean, they missed it in the congregation, but they wouldn't want to miss it altogether. So mm -hmm. to give Muslims that sense of connectivity with our tradition and the things that we used to do, uh, we would recommend that they do it at home. Uh, and it's also uh, not only to fulfill the requirement of the Islamic law here, Safiya, but uh, I would say that it is necessary for us as Muslims and everyone else uh, to try and, and do the good things that we have been accustomed to doing as much as we can and as closely as we can uh, despite the lockdown. Because the lockdown is, uh, is, is obviously, you know, this whole uh, need for physical distancing uh, is taking its toll on, on, on the mental uh, state of the nation. And, uh, and we have to make sure that as individuals, we are keeping ourselves not only physically healthy, but mentally uh, healthy as well. And so main, to maintain our mental health, we have to do all of the normal things, go out for walks as needed, um, uh, pray as, uh, as we normally did, as closely corresponding to the tradition as we have done before. So we can walk away with the satisfaction uh, knowing that yes uh, we are you know the mosques are closed but we're still uh, connected with our tradition and this is one of the most important reasons why uh, i uh, lean towards having virtual prayers safia because i want muslims to feel that we can still uh, do what we normally did um, uh, and still have that enjoyment despite the fact that we have to practice physical distancing mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting point, Dr. Shapiro. There's so much more we could discuss, especially about how we can reach out to family and friends during this time, um, how we can um, cook and bake and, and, and have that celebratory spirit within our homes. But we're running out of time, so we'll leave that for another time. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro. You're welcome. And I wish you a happy Eid. Oh, and happy Eid to you too, and to all our viewers. <laughs> exactly. Uh, happy Eid to all of you. Eid Mubarak. <laughs> Eid Mubarak to everybody. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed Eid. Take care.